Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Hajj in Perspective. In this episode, insha'Allah ta'ala, we're going to be talking about Hajj as an opportunity to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to change our ways. There's no doubt that one of the major aims of the Hajj and one of the major purposes of the Hajj is for us to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recognize our need of Him and to repent for our sins. In the very first episode, we talked about the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding uh, the Hajj and regarding some of the virtues of the Hajj. And indeed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do you not know that Hajj wipes out that which came before it? And we talked about the hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa sallam said that whoever performs Hajj does not commit a immorality with his tongue nor uh, openly defy and disobey Allah with his actions then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns him to the state in which his mother gave birth to him i.e. when we are born we're born without any sin and so if we want to return back to that state of not having any sin then the key is to have a successful Hajj and indeed one of the purposes of the Hajj is for us to repent to Allah Azza wa Jalla and to turn back to Him. One of the most important things that we need to mention regarding Hajj and repentance is a misconception that many people have and this misconception is that simply going to the Hajj and wandering sort of from place to place, completing the Hajj, coming back is enough for us to have our sins forgiven. And this is not the case. Sins, brothers and sisters, are of two types. Major sins and minor sins. Major sins are those sins uh, which the punishment of Allah is threatened for, or the anger of Allah, or the hellfire, or they're mentioned in the Quran, or the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam as being severe, or being great. All of these things indicate that a sin is a major sin. Just to give you some examples of the major sins, the likes of backbiting, the likes of taking or giving or facilitating interest, riba, the likes of fornication and adultery, the likes of speaking about Allah without knowledge, and so on and so forth. These major sins that perhaps we may fall into inadvertently and accidentally, these major sins it is not enough for you to simply travel from Mina to Arafat to Muzdalifah to Mina for those sins to be expiated. Rather, in order to gain the reward that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that you return like the day that your mother gave birth to you, then you need something more than that. And that is that you actively and consciously need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those mistakes. As for those lesser sins, they can be expiated by the difficulties that you face. You're going to Arafat, the, the troubles, the hardships you endure, your patience. Those expiate those minor sins. As in, they can be removed without a conscious and a deliberate uh, attempt to seek forgiveness for them. As for the major sins, Hajj can remove them. And you can return from Hajj without any sin. However, to do this, you must be very conscious that you have committed them and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you for them. So we come on to the topic of what the essence of repentance is. And the essence of repentance, brothers and sisters, in Islam is three things, past, present and future. As for the past, it is the feeling of sorrow and regret over what you've done. So let's imagine that a person was involved in riba in interest or in something similar, usury or something similar to that. And the first thing that they have to do is to actually regret that they got involved. It's no use sort of dusting yourself down and saying, oh well, what happened, happened. You have to actually have regret for it. You have to actually feel sorrow for it. It has to be something that you're not happy with, that if the chance came again, you wouldn't repeat. So the first thing is in the past to regret. As for the present, you have to stop doing it. Because many, many people, they repent from sins, but they don't stop doing them. So a person says, Astaghfirullah. For example, a person is smoking 
and while they are smoking they are saying astaghfirullah even if they regret their smoking in the past if they haven't stopped it in the present then it's not a complete repentance it's not a true repentance you have to stop what you're doing in the present now some people might say if we relate this to hajj there are some things you can't easily stop in the present because those sins are waiting for you at home for example the likes of a mortgage or something similar to that the best thing that you can do at least is to have the intention that they will stop at the earliest opportunity and then of course there comes the third condition which relates to the future and this condition is that you intend never ever again to fall into that sin so in the past you regret it in the present you stop doing it at the earliest possible opportunity and in the future you intend never to do it again now there is a fourth condition and that condition is not present in every kind of repentance but sometimes when we do sins we don't just affect ourselves we affect the other people around us and the way that we repent from the sins that we have done that affect other people around us is primarily by asking their forgiveness so not only do we regret not only do we stop doing it not only do we intend never to do it again but we also ask the forgiveness of those people that we may have harmed and if there's some way to return the evil that we did to to return the good of it back to them for example by giving them back money that was stolen for example by speaking well of them when you had spoken badly of them by saying uh, good things to people that you'd said bad things about by apologizing to them then this must be done for your repentance to be complete now some of you may be thinking well there are circumstances in which i am unable to do that let's say the person passed away or something was taken from them but they have long since left and you have no idea where they are if it's a physical object then you can give sadaqa on their behalf a uh, charity on their behalf until you feel that you have paid back for the loss that you have uh, caused them and of course you can make dua for them especially in the case of non-material items that you make dua for them until you feel you have repaid some of the injustice that you had done towards them so we're back on those four conditions past regret present stop doing it future intend never to do it again and in addition if you've taken something from someone if you've harmed someone that you try to make that bad into something good uh, and at the very least you make dua for them until you feel that you have made up for the injustice that you did towards them now after all of this there's something very important that relates to repentance in the hajj and that's not just our saying astaghfirullah 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 but also about us taking some time to reflect upon what we've done and this is what we call in arabic muhasabatun nafs taking your soul to account for what it's done take some time during the days of hajj to imagine that you died this very night or this very moment or at the end of this episode you passed away and none of us have a guarantee that we will live until the end of this episode or indeed until the end of this evening or indeed until tomorrow morning comes none of us have a guarantee for that so take some time to imagine that you passed away what sins would you be most regretful over what sins would you be uh, most ashamed of would you be most worried about what good deeds had you done that were very good that you're pleased with and you're happy that Allah has given you the ability to do where do you feel you're falling short take yourself to account as some of the great scholars of Islam said take yourself to account before you are taken to account and weigh your deeds before your deeds are weighed so give yourself a mock exam in the days of the hajj whether you're going on hajj or whether you're not going on hajj to ask yourself what have i done because one of the greatest tricks of the shaitan that the shaitan confuses people with is that he convinces you that you haven't sinned and he convinces you that your hajj is a hajj in which you haven't said anything untoward you haven't done anything untoward you haven't disobeyed allah azza wa jal in it or in the first 10 days of the hijjah that you have had a successful time and you haven't disobeyed allah we disobey allah every single day the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullu bani adam khata wa khayru al khata'in at all of the children of adam frequently make mistakes it's not an occasional thing frequently make mistakes and the best of those who frequently make mistakes are those who frequently repent so repentance shouldn't be a once in a year thing but the first 10 days of hajj give you that opportunity just to take yourself to account 
to really sit down and say, okay, what are my biggest sins? What are my biggest faults? Where am I going wrong? And also, what am I doing good? So that you can do more of the good and less of the bad, and so that you can regret what it is that you've done. You can stop doing it. You can intend never ever to do it again. And if you've harmed anyone, you can repay back that harm that you may have done to them. So really, Hajj has that very strong link with repentance. It has that very strong link with self-reflection. And of course, the perfect day to have asked Allah to forgive you and to have turned to Allah Azza wa Jal is the day of Arafah. And indeed, it's not worth delaying your repentance until then. Rather, repentance is a constant thing. It's for today, right now. And of course, it's for the days of Hajj and particularly the days when the times when you're uh, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He forgives you. And in this way, inshallah, you will be able to return from Hajj like the day that you were born. That's all we have time for in this episode. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.